So today I guide you to the best places to farm those beautiful legendaries, with the best spots for all areas of the game, meaning every item no matter the event or DLC it's exclusive to, today I have a farm for you which will help you no doubtedly get that item you are after. How's it going guys, my name's DPJ and today I bring you another BR3 video, if you do enjoy it leaving a like it really helps out and subscribe if you do want to see more. Also to note, my Discord link is now fixed, I don't know what happened over there, but there was a mass reset I believe on Discord links, I had to reset mine and go back through all my videos and put in that new link. So if you do want to join my Discord, with dedicated trading sections and so much more for Borderlands no matter the platform you play it on, do join via the link within the video description. So forgetting about the loot the universe as that rotates every week, today I bring you 5 amazing legendary farms which cover all aspects of the game so you can literally get everything you are looking for besides obviously a few exclusive boss drops. As I wanted to bring you an all in one video I place to learn about every good farm and that's what we have today. So getting into it and starting with 2 places you can farm so you get all non DLC or event legendaries. So at 5 we have this amazing spot which is the slaughter shaft. So located on Pandora, the slower shaft is probably and always will be one of the best non-DLC and event legendary farming spots, just because of how many higher tier enemies are here, meaning you have increased chances of getting those legendaries. It is like for me sometimes like every one in two enemies does drop a legendary here, and you can fill up that space pretty quickly. The thing about this place is though the fact of how hard it can be for some, but taking in the right weapons and builds makes this place a piece of cake. Zane users out there struggling with this a lot of shaft, I will link you three of my latest builds which will see you walk through this so so easily. Next up we have another great farm for non DLC and event legendaries and this is a lot like a small slaughter shaft. Again located on Pandora, you want to load into the splinter lands and spawn into the pit stop. Here there is an area where you actually come across a ton of enemies where you can run a simple route and see yourself rewarded many many legendaries. So load into the splinter lands, follow the path I take on screen now to get here. Once you are here, there is a save point outside this place, so go in, get that loot, quit out, load back up, rinse and repeat, and earn that loot people. Now I'm fully aware a lot of people are experiencing stingy loot drops upon Mayhem 10 or Mayhem 2.0 in general, but I can confirm it's not the same for everybody. I have spoke to many many people now who do state that Mayhem 10 or Mayhem 2.0 seems normal, but for me it isn't like that. Some places for me since the introduction of Mayhem 2.0 have become way more inconsistent and it's why I will show you a few other places which I can confirm still work great for me, so hopefully they will for you too. And that last place I just showed you, I mean it's a great great place, but it's nowhere near as consistent as it once was, and it's why it was recorded on Mayhem 4, like a couple of other places I will show you today are also recorded on Mayhem 4, just to show you what they can be like. 
So yeah, this video was supposed to be five amazing locations to farm those legendaries, trying to cover everything the game offers in terms of events and DLCs, but I will add an extra few here and there. So another place which I haven't long stopped farming and the footage you are seeing is what I just got is the Jabba Mogwar upon Eden 6 located on Amber Mia, seen via the location on screen now. Just come here, bring yourself a cryo weapon and these dudes duplicate when you shoot them with that cryo, meaning you can spend the entire day here farming these dudes. Now what I do and it's perfect for Zane is get yourself an incendiary redistributor with that cryo sentinel anointment, I mean it doesn't have to be a redistributor, it can be any incendiary weapon, but as long as it's got that cryo sentinel anointment, it will work, because what happens is, you are shooting and damaging them with the incendiary, but at the same time doing cryo damage meaning they will duplicate. So you can just keep farming these dudes over and over and those legendary drop rates seem real high here too, way higher than what they used to be. So yeah people use this and enjoy it. So next up and moving on to the Moxie's Heist to the Handsome Jackpot DLC 1 and without doubt the best DLC 1 legendary farm for all those beautiful legendaries is the level 2 Freddy farm. So upon the Handsome Jackpot within the VIP area where Freddy is hiding, to draw him out go and destroy all robots. He will then spawn. Now here when he does spawn in there will be a chance that he will appear at a level 2. If he doesn't, quit out and load back in, repeat the process of taking out those robots. Yeah it can be long but trust me it's worth it. When it does appear at level 2, you are ready to earn that loot like nothing else you have ever seen. So simply kill him, let that loot drop, then just fast travel back down to the start of the VIP area. Run back up here, he will respawn straight away, kill him again, fast travel back, rinse and repeat until your fingers have had enough. And you will earn some amazing Moxie's highest loot for sure. Now we've just covered Freddy, which is probably the most consistent farm still in the game for that Mayhem 10 loot. And it's just crazy easy to get it from him. But if you want a place where you can farm Moxie's Heist DLC legendaries, but at the same time get a great amount of Cartel legendaries too, in actual fact, an insane amount of Cartel legendaries, probably the best place in the game outside of the Villa Ultraviolet to farm the Cartel underbosses. Bosses like the Roaster, a Fish Slap, the Tenderizer, Josie Bite, Franco Firewall, and any other underboss there is. This place is incredible for that. And this place is actually quite a famous one too, it's Scrap Trap Prime. He's located upon the conductor and the handsome jackpot and he has his very own little area. So follow the route I take here. Let's have a chat, shall we? Now once you are here, this farm is simple and efficient. A scrap trap nest will spawn in in their crazy numbers. And with them those cartel enemies will spawn in a great number two, to a point of view seeing sometimes up to five underbosses per run before scrap trap shows. But once he does you kill him, wait for that red school to disappear off the screen, then run into this corner, into the back corner, wait here a few seconds, run back in and the whole process will reset meaning you can just rinse and repeat this all day long and it will give you a great amount of legendaries from the Moxie's Heist of the Handsome Jackpot as well as Villa Ultraviolet legendaries at the same time. Ok so moving on to DLC 2, the Guns of Love and Tentacles. So the best place to farm those legendaries here people is no doubt who I call Tom and Jerry aka Tom and Zam. So Tom and Jerry are located on Xylargos and can be found within the Heart's Desire, so here you want to load into what beats beneath. Then simply jump down into their arena. Once you are here it's simple, just kill one. So kill either or then just fast travel back to this fast travel station. When you come back down here people they will both respawn. 
so you can rinse and repeat the process of killing one of these and then fast traveling back. Doing this you will earn a ton of guns, love and tentacles, legendaries, faster than any other way. Okay so this is another place I've heard people stating that it isn't as efficient as it once was. I mean this for me though isn't too bad, but if you are experiencing problems here yourself, there is another place in which you can farm upon Xylargos which isn't as good as Tom and Jerry when they work. I call Tom and Zam Tom and Jerry by the way people if you're confused of what I'm going on about. But another place to farm for decent guns, love and tentacles DLC loot is Amak. This boss spawns in a pine cursed haven so spawn in our Olmstead square and follow this route I take on screen. Now only a quick little route. and the area you will go to will be full of enemies so it's up to you if you want to farm these as you will sometimes see a high amount of cartel enemies here too so if you want to farm then you can but Amok himself spawns within this corner he falls out of a teleporter he's sometimes a little late to appear but he's almost always here and he does drop a high quantity of loot most of the time so enjoy these people <laughs> Okay, so lastly guys, a farm for all of the new Revenge of the Cartels event legendaries. So with this farm, you first need to gain access to the Villa Ultraviolet. Once you are here, do what's needed to make your way to that Joey Ultraviolet encounter. Once you have got here though, it's pretty simple people. Before Joey appears, you first have to take the shields or health bars off two sub-bosses. These sub-bosses are either Josie Bite, Frank or Firewall, the Roaster, the Tenderizer, Fish Slap or Tyrone Smullins. Any two of these sub-bosses spawn here, and it's these who you will be farming. Use the guide on screen now to see what each sub-boss drops. So once here, it's pretty simple. Firstly, one sub-boss will spawn in. You'll take off that one health or shield bar, then the other will enter the encounter while the first one disappears. You then need to take off the health or shield bar of the second sub-boss. After you've done this, they both then re-enter the fight with Joey Ultraviolet. Here it's simple, just kill the sub-bosses but do not kill Joey Ultraviolet. Once you've killed the sub-bosses and that loot has dropped, here you have two options. You can either fast travel back to the start and run back here, or you can do the quicker method, which is a little expensive, in killing yourself. If you do kill yourself, you spawn right above the boss room, and it saves you doing all the running. But doing either works just fine. And when you get back into the fight, both sub-bosses will respawn and you can rinse and repeat this process. It is as simple as that guys. Now if you come here and the two sub-bosses ain't the ones you want, they don't drop the loot you want, quit out and load back in. Doing this will see you spawn right back at the beginning but you can just run straight up to the mansion doors where you just have to kill one sub-boss. Once you kill that sub-boss you re-enter the mansion and you can jump straight back down into the fight. This process though will have to be repeated if the sub-bosses again and again ain't the ones you are looking for. But yeah guys, these are in my opinion the 5 best farms for legendaries across the game, covering all aspects of the legendary loot pools. If you enjoyed the video leaving a like really helps me out, if you're new around here and want to see more Borderlands be sure to subscribe, if you never want to miss a video I upload, can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. If you guys want to join an amazing community full of players on all platforms, with dedicated trading sections, LFG sections and much much more, join my discord linked within the video description. But guys on that note, we have come to the end, I hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next one.